The problems for my videos can be downloaded from my website, tonybell.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link. You'll see there's no sign in, no sign up, nothing like that. Just a hundred plus pages of accounting exercises. Many of the exercises are free and open, about 40%. And if you're working through those and finding you're getting great value out of them, you might consider joining and getting a channel membership that has access to the other 60% of the videos. All right, let's jump into today's exercise. Let's jump into problem 81A, a sales budget and a schedule of expected cash collections. The sales budget, they don't come much more simple than a sales budget in terms of the work we'll have to do. Schedule of expected cash collections though, is much more interesting. Let's get started. Baker Company shows the following estimates for its unit sales for the next year. And we can see there's quarterly sales. Now a quarter is a three month period. We'll assume that they're working on a calendar year. So quarter one is January, February, March, quarter two, April, May, June, etc. cetera. Um, and it says the company expects to sell its goods for $50 a unit and it says prepare a sales budget. What a sales budget is saying is, what's my revenue gonna be uh, for the year and for each quarter? And you can simply do this by multiplying the unit sold by the price per unit. Uh, let's do it and we'll do it in sort of a more formal budget form. So we start with the name of our company, Baker Company. It's going to have a three line title like any financial report. Uh, then the name of what we're preparing, and this is a sales budget. And this is for the year ended, and we'll assume it's a calendar year, December 31st. Okay, uh, so there's a, the headings for these budgets are the quarters, so Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Sometimes we'll do monthly budgets and the headings will be the month. And the year is sort of our totals column. And we start with units sold with the given information here. Units sold, and so in Q1, that's 11,000 units, Q2, 12,000. Q3, 14,000, Q4, 13,000, and in total for the year, 50,000 units. Okay, this is a starting point for the budgeting process for most companies is like, how much are we gonna sell? And if you know how much you're gonna sell, then you kind of know, well, how much money you have to spend potentially. And you also know like, okay, if I'm gonna sell 50,000 units, I gotta make 50,000 units during the year. So I gotta have a workforce to make 50,000 units. I gotta be ready to buy the material with which I'm gonna make the 50,000 units, right? Knowing I'm gonna make and sell 50,000 units, tells you a lot, right, about your, your planning process. So if you have a good idea of what you're gonna make, you know, do I need to hire more people or, or what do I need to do? So anyway, that's our starting point. And the first thing you can do is like, well, how much money does that mean? So 50,000 units, what is that in dollars? And that's what we're doing in the sales budget. So we just multiply by the sales price per unit. So our sales price is uh, $50 a unit. And we're gonna get our sales revenue for the uh, quarter and for the year. 11,000 times 50, $550,000. 12,000 times 50 is $600,000. 14,000 times 50 is $700,000 and 13,000 times 50 is $650,000. 50,000 times 50, that's 2.5 million. In terms of formatting, you know, I would put an underline under anything where the next line down is calculated and I would put a double underline underneath the bottom line in terms of dollar signs, you put dollar signs in each column, the first place a dollar value appears. So 11,000 is units, it's not dollars. This is dollars. So each column gets a dollar sign. And if the bottom line is a dollar amount, that gets a dollar sign as well. Your professor may or may not be picky about formatting here, but if they are, that's, that's how I would do it. Um, okay, that's it for the sales budget. So it says, okay, you know, pretty like 
the least exciting of the budgets we're going to do uh, this entire semester. Pretty straightforward. We're planning to make $2.5 million of sales. Well, often when you make a sale, you actually don't get the money right away, right? Companies sell things on account. There's collections problems. There's a delay. You make the sale this month, you collect the money next month. And it's really important to know, well, when am I getting the money? Because you're going to plan on spending the money, right? I'm going to hire X, X amount of employees. I got to pay for my materials on my end, right? So we got to track when is the money coming in and when is the money expected to go out? Because we want to know if we're going to run out of money. Fundamentally, that's a concern of a company. So that's with this next schedule. And I think the first really interesting schedule of the chapter comes in. It says the company, additional information, the company expects to collect 70% of sales in the quarter of the sale, 25% in the quarter following the sale, and 5% is expected to be uncollectible. So we're making all those sales. We're not going to see all the money. And that's normal, right? You have receivables. Not every customer pays. The company's beginning accounts receivable was $125,000, all of which was expected to be collected in the first quarter. Okay, let's start with the three-line title. Uh, it says, prepare a schedule of expected cash collections. Baker Company. Schedule of expected cash collections and this is for the year ended december 31st and if we knew the year we would give the year and again our heading is q1 q2 q3 q4 and year okay so now we're interested in figuring out okay well when am i going to collect the money uh the the first one is this it gives us the company's beginning accounts receivable is $125,000, all of which is expected to collect in the first quarter. So, beginning AR, all of which is going to be collected in quarter one, it's $125,000. So, I put it in quarter one. That's it for AR, right? Like, I don't have, you know, to worry about my beginning of year accounts receivable in quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, you know, if, if they owed me from last December, I've probably got the money in January, February, March. I don't have to worry about it in April, May, June, typically. So that's my total for the year. What about Q1 collections? All right, so I made $550,000 of sales in quarter one. Do I get $550,000 of cash in quarter one? The answer is no. I only get 70% of the money in quarter one. So 550 times 0 0.70%, 0 0.7, 385,000 of the 550 comes in in quarter one, 385,000. Well, what about this 25%? It says 25% of the money typically comes in in the quarter following the sale. So of this 550, 25% of the money is going to hit in quarter two. So 550 times 0 0.25, 137,500 comes in in quarter two. What about in quarter three? Nothing. We're expecting in quarter one, I'm going to get all most of the money in quarter one, some of the money in quarter two, and some of the money won't be collected. Let's let's add this up. 385 plus 137.5. I get 522500. Well, wait a second. I was owed 550. I only got 522500. What's the difference here? 550 minus 522500, 27,500. I I don't think I'm going to collect and that's this 5% of sales that are uncollectible, right? I sold 550. I'm only going to get 522,500 of cash. 27.5 is 5%. 550. Oops. Uh, 550,000 times 0 0.05. 27.5 is the 5% I don't think I'm going to collect. So that's why those numbers don't match. Uh, same thing will happen with quarter two. I won't do all the math there, but. Quarter two collections, I'm going to get 70% of it in quarter two. So 70% of 600,000 is 420. And 25% in the following quarter, which is 150,000. 
420 and 150 is 570. In terms of quarter three collections, when am I going to see that money? Well, it's 700,000. I see 70% of it in the quarter of the sale. 70% of that comes in in quarter three, so that's 490. And 25% in the quarter following, so um, 70, sorry, 700,000 times 0 0.25 is 175. Totaling that up, plus 490 is 665. And last but not least, Q4 collections. Um, 650 is the sales, and I get 70% in the quarter the sales are made. 455. And the rest is coming in, well, 25% is coming in the next quarter, so that's receivable. The 5% would be uh, uh, allowed for as the allowance for doubtful accounts. We don't think we're going to collect that other 5%. Uh, so the, um, uh, the total, though, of Q4 collections that happens this year is 455000 The 25% is next year's starting balance of the receivable, right? Next year, we start with whatever uh, 650 times 0 0.25, 162500 That would be my opening receivable for next year that I would expect to collect in the first quarter of next year. Um, okay, that's it. So now we just need totals. And so I would call this, maybe I'll say total cash collections, total cash collections. So in Q1, I expect to uh, collect 125, my opening AR, and of quarter one sales, I expect to collect 385. So my total collections in Q1 are $510,000. Actually, let's put the underline there. Uh, 137.5 plus 420. 557.500. 175 plus 455, 630. So this should add both ways to get this grand total. So if I add from left to right or if I add up and down, should add to the same number. Let's try 510 plus 557, 500 plus 640 plus 630. Oops, 630. Two three three seven five hundred. The thing you might notice here is the number's lower, right? We sell two point five million dollars, but we only get two point three million. Why is that? Well, some of the sales don't get collected. The end of Q four, right? We're gonna collect those uh, Q one the next year, and five percent we don't collect at all. So that's why the number of the, the sales revenue doesn't always reflect the cash coming in. And that's important to a company, right? You run out of cash, you're dead. So that's why we track it so closely. Uh, let me just add this thing down and make sure it adds properly both ways. 125 plus 522, 500 plus 570 plus 665 plus 455. And two, three, three, seven, five hundred. Yeah, did add both ways. I need dollar signs. Uh, these are dollar amounts, so you don't have to do this in green ink. I just do it to make them stick out. But dollar signs, top and bottom of each column, right? Everything in here is a dollar amount. So top and bottom, top and bottom, top and bottom, top and bottom. And there we have it. We've got a beautiful schedule of expected cash collections. We've got a beautiful sales budget. We've done a beautiful job. On problem 81A, one thing left to do, say goodbye, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. The next video in our series is right up here, and if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.